A customer sent in the power supply for a Vizio M75-E1 and they were claiming that everything worked except for the backlights. Now what's interesting is, despite the amount of damage we have here, the board apparently is still turning on and does work, except for the backlight. So the first thing I like to do is power it up, see if we can get all of our proper voltages. Obviously the backlight connector probably will have zero volts, but let's just go ahead and start with that. So I just plugged it in. I'm going to turn on the surge protector now and it looks like nothing is catching fire here yet. I do have my on off switch here that is connected to the PS on line. So when I turn it on, Okay, and I actually just turned it off immediately because I think I just saw a quick little spark here and I heard a very, very loud high pitch sound from the board. So what I'm gonna do is in DC mode, we're gonna go ahead and do some very quick voltage checks. All right, so this one is our 19 volt line. We are getting 19 volts. Let's see, we have, so we have our 19 volts and let's check our 24 over here and we do not have our 24 volts, which we do need that. So let's go ahead and turn it off. Okay, I'm here. I think I smell some burning. But it's actually not coming from here, so I don't know. Weird. Since we just had the board on and high powered, I'm gonna use my capacitor discharger to discharge our capacitors here before we start doing resistance checks because I don't want to break my multimeter. So I think it's obvious we have some damage here. One of the things I'm gonna do is replace the capacitor that was here previously. This one over here is actually in parallel with it down here. So we're gonna replace that one as well. And we're gonna to check to see if these diodes and transistors are shorted. I assume they are. Uh, this one physically obviously is damaged, so we'll replace it. But just for fun, we're still gonna do a measurement and we're getting about 10, 11, 12 ohms. This one over here, it is in parallel, so I assume the same resistance will appear. Yep, about 12 ohms. I believe one of the legs of this transistor is shared with this diode, so this one might actually be affected. And even if it is not, we're actually still gonna replace it. Okay, I'm getting about 17 kilo ohms. This one is a good transistor. When I measure that, it's showing 4.8 mega ohms. All right, so here's what we'll do is, we're gonna go ahead and actually remove all four of these and we're gonna remeasure them again out of circuit. As I like to do, I'm gonna start by adding solder to all the joints first. All right, there's our first one. And I think one of them didn't actually desolder properly. Yep, it was the middle leg, but there's our second one. So this is the very burnt diode. And that is our second transistor. All right, I have placed our two transistors over here alongside a good replacement one we're gonna use and our two diodes over here alongside with the replacement. So black lead on the middle pin and red lead on the outside pins, we get OL 3.8, OL and four. And then our good one, we get OL and this one should be four. Okay, so and then our replacement is 0.53 mega ohms. And then our replacement here is 1.49 mega ohms. If I swap my leads, so 40.9 kilo ohms. Let's go back to the so 1.5 mega. Yeah, and then this one is shorted. And then on our replacement, 1.48. So same thing, it looks like this diode here is good, these two transistors are good, but we're gonna replace all of them just because even though I'm not detecting a fault right now, uh, they are all in parallel. So when one goes out, typically it can damage the others and I've seen it where sometimes you can't actually detect a fault yet, but over time, over the next few weeks to a month of use, the other transistors might go out, So or diodes. So we definitely wanna replace everything all at once. Before we install the replacements, I'm gonna do a quick little cleanup. So I wanna remove all of the old thermal paste and any of the burning. So the old thermal paste is because it's kind of crusty and it's not gonna be transferring heat as well as it should, as at least as a fresh thermal paste would. And then the burn marks, you wanna remove those because anytime you have any charring of any sort, it actually can become conductive and short things out. All right, perfect, this is clean enough. 
So the reason I put gloves on is because with the thermal paste, it gets very messy and it's very hard to actually remove even with soap and water. Now we'll cut off the excess. I'm gonna recheck the middle pin on that transistor. It looks like maybe I didn't push it all the way through. And this one looks okay. I can see it peeking through, uh, even though it's not very much, but this one I actually can't see. So I might have not pushed that pin in all the way. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be a little risky, and I don't recommend you do this. But with my finger, I'm going to be pushing the middle pin uh, while I'm soldering it on the other side. So I'm probably gonna burn myself, but this is the fastest and most efficient way I know how to do this. Okay, wasn't that bad? Yep, there we go, felt it. And there's still no excess on the top, but I can at least see it peeking through. So just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more solder, hang it on the joint for an extra second. But I know that the heat transferred properly through the pin, based on the fact that I burnt my finger a little bit. So now we're gonna replace the capacitor. There is one that is, well, completely missing on the front of the board, so we're gonna start with replacing that one. And I believe these are the two legs for it here. So I'm just gonna solder from this side and just pull those legs through. Actually, we're gonna push them through. Yeah, it's just easier. And then we'll use the desolder wick here to finish it off. And we're left with just these two legs. So this one's gonna be a little harder to just push the legs through since there is a component on the other side. So we'll just use the desolder pump. Okay, let's see if that did it. So the legs are moving, but there we go. Okay, I just had to put a little more muscle, pull it through. All right, and these are my two replacements. And these are ceramic, so they don't have a polarity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and feed them through regardless of the orientation. And I'm just gonna bend the pins out so that the capacitor doesn't fall through. And now we'll just solder it in, or them in. So I did a bunch of checks around the board. I could not find any other shorted components or open components that should be shorted, like fuses or thermal resistors. Everything else checked okay. So let's go ahead and power it up. Everything's good so far. Turned it on. I don't have that high pitch sound that we had prior. Let's go ahead and recheck our 19 volts. Still present. And now let's check our 24 volts over here, which we did not have prior. And we do now, we have 24.29 volts. So it looks like we fixed the board. We're now able to get our backlight voltage. So the customer should be pretty happy about that. If you're interested in fixing this board yourself, we'll have a link for a repair kit on our website in the description below, as well as links to some of the tools that we use for today's repair. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.